Hello all, as the opportunity has presented itself, thought I'd do a short video on diagnosing and repairing a cable break. It's pretty much the same process for most power tools. Only happened to me twice in a couple of decades, but it does happen and hopefully this video will help give a little confidence for this simple fix to those who've not done it before. The symptoms can be similar for worn brushes, an electronic fault and a cable break, intermittent power delivery and power dips. To demonstrate the issue, here you can see the saw plugged in and I'm pulling the trigger with nothing happening. If I move the cord around a bit, you hear the power delivery is intermittent when it eventually comes on and dead with the cable at a certain angle. 100% a cable break then. Power can also be intermittent or you can experience loss of power when your brushes are on the way out too. Both problems can manifest in similar ways, so if when you waggle the cable the tool runs okay, but when put to work it misbehaves, you'll probably want to check the brushes. Now I know mine's a cable break, but while I have the torque screwdriver out, I'll check the brushes anyway. There's as good an opportunity as any to give the back of the saw a bit of a blowout and a clean. Corded saws, grinders and routers will have pretty easy access to brushes. A couple of screws and you're in usually. So this is a five year old saw and the brushes are almost like new. There's plenty on them sticking out of their mount and the little coiled retaining springs are where they should be and doing their job, which is pushing the brushes to the commutator. If you don't suspect the cable break and your brushes look in good order like this, then it could be an armature or more likely an electronics problem, which are just as well sending to a service center to be sorted if it can be, to be honest. To sort the cable break then, first making sure it's unplugged from power, of course, where the power cord enters the tool, there's usually a piece of the body you can remove closest to it saving you taking the whole tool body apart, like on a lot of old corded drills. Locate the screws for that piece and dive in and remove them, then wrestle the body piece away. Like most power tools, this saw has no earth, just the blue neutral and brown live. In this case, they screw straight onto the trigger mechanism. Whatever the tool and wherever they terminate, they'll be pretty obvious. Nice to see it's a fully rubber sealed switch on the Mafel. I undo the cable clamp first to give myself a little room to move, then unscrew the wires from the trigger. So in the tools I've repaired cable brakes on before, the mains wires are right there, easily accessible via terminals once the cover is removed. Here though, I have to pull out the trigger mechanism to access the wires. It's just seated in mouldings in the body, so it just pulls out. It's only two wires and the trigger only seats one way, but I take the precaution to mark the live and neutral side anyways. There are two other black cables that run into the machine from the trigger also. You might find the piece of kit you're working on will also have wires like this that might share a terminal with your mains wires. Mine don't, but if yours do, take care to mark them with some coloured tape or something if they'll likely become unseated. Now the eagle-eyed will notice I use Nutrit connectors, so I'm just replacing the length of wire to the connector. If your tool has a normal cable, tool to plug, just cut back your cable 3 inches or so from where it exited the tool. Use the cable you've cut off to indicate how much cable sheathing to remove for inside the tool. Then just roll it lightly around a Stanley blade to score it. As you bend the cable where you've scored, it should expose the blue and brown core cables at which point you can slide the sheathing off. But don't overdo it with the Stanley blade, you don't want to nick the cores. You can use the Stanley to strip the cores too, but again gently does it if you do. If you have stripping tools like these, use a core from your now defunct piece of wire to set the depth so they don't chop into the copper. That's the wire prepped and magically my Nutrit connector is back on. For those of you interested, I'll link my video on these connectors at the end and in the description. Remember if there's a boot for the cable where it exits the tool, like the one here, or any other clamp parts, be sure to thread them on in order before connecting wires if you've removed them. Then go ahead and reconnect the live and neutral. Hard to film this as I necessarily need my hands in the way, but reinsert everything back where it came from. Follow the original wire path as far as is possible, as it's likely on that path for a reason to avoid the body shell. Place the cable boot, then fix the cable clamp. Before you put covers or body shells back on, just double check everything is seated okay. No straggling wires and, in my case, the trigger release and trigger itself is functioning properly. Once happy, screw the body back together. That's it, back in one piece and a little extra length on my cable for good measure. Now it's testy time.
perfect. So I hope this has helped any of you who might have a similar problem and wondering whether to give it a go to fix it. I should say that if in doubt and with your tool under warranty, get the manufacturer or dealer to service or repair your tool. But out of warranty with this problem, I'd say have at it. It's a straightforward fix and hopefully this video will help you to repair if you've not had the experience of doing it before. Thanks for watching.